Uh, thank you, Chuck. Um, you know, obviously we're very pleased to be able to come out with a hard-fought, hard-earned uh, win versus a very good Memphis team. Uh, it's a physical game. Uh, you know, a lot of ebbs and flows in the game. You know, we'd get up, they get up, we'd get up, they'd get up. You know, both teams just kept kept playing. Uh, just again, proud of the way our guys responded. Uh, again, I thought you know, Coach Norvell has done a really good job with Memphis, and we feel very fortunate to come out with the victory. Uh, Will played a really good football game for us. You know, he's a tough, hard-nosed kid. Made some really good throws. You know, and the way he's playing right now is pretty much inspiring our whole team, uh, just because of his toughness and you know his will to do and his passion and the way he's playing. It kind of inspires and invigorates everybody else. And so, um, you know, we feel fortunate, like I said, coming out with the W. Um, but we have to press forward really quickly with the short week uh, going down to Tampa to play, you know, South Florida. Um, you know, Willie's done a really good job there, you know, with their program and, you know, having a really good year. I know they had a tough one in our last outing, but, you know, they've been playing really well and, you know, had a tough one against Temple. And so we got to get ready. Very explosive team, you know, you know, with Quinn Flowers and Mac, you know, you know, one-two punch of those two guys, as we know, are, you know, present you a lot of problems, you know, and they got speed on the edge, you know, Adams, obviously is a guy that, Took one back to the house against us last year in a kickoff uh, return. Athletic and big everywhere, uh, and it's going to be a tough game for us, you know. So we got to prepare and get ready for another tough challenge, and you know, in, in our conference, which is a really tough conference. We'll take questions for Coach Nima Delolo, please. Hit star one on your telephone keypad to join the queue. Then the operator will introduce you. We'll take our first question from Gene Wang with the Washington Post. Hey, good morning, Ken. Hi, Jane. How you doing? Good. Um, just first off, health-wise, you said you seem to come out of that the Memphis game um, not too uh, in pretty good shape. Is that is that the case going into Friday? Yeah, you know the normal uh, bumps and bruises. You know, Tonio had to leave the game, but he'll be back. You know, so we, you know, we expect him to be back. But uh, at this point, you know, we just listened to our getting our medical report this morning. But by Friday, um, everybody should be back. And South Florida, a team that can put up a lot of points, I think they're 11th in the country or something, averaging 42 points a game. What do you have to do to try to slow that offense? You know, obviously, you know, everything starts, you know, with with Flowers. You know, I mean, he's just uh, so dynamic with the football. Uh, and obviously, Mac is a really good back. But everything starts with him. Uh, you know, so if you you got you to gotta stop the run game, if you, you know, commit too many guys to the run game – Obviously, with Adams, you know, and the speed they have to put, you know, the, to go up top and go deep, they spread you out in a lot of different formations. To, you know, throw their their bubble screens and their now screens to get you spread out. And if you spread out too much, you know, they run the ball inside. If you overcompensate to their unbalanced stuff, they go the other way. They they just present a lot of problems for you offensively, and you can't take away everything, and you got to try to pick your your poison, so to speak. But um, it's tough, you know. I mean, you you kind of look at it. There's a lot of different guys that you got to try to shut down, and obviously there haven't been anybody has been able to slow them down. And do you emphasize forcing turnovers? I know it's a huge point of em- emphasis throughout the years winning the turnover battle, but in a game like this, you know, trying to get the turnovers. I think you've had a turnover in like 24 of the last 26 games, and they've been timely, especially. Well, our, our I mean, it's always our culture of who we are, winning the turnover battle, taking care of the ball, Gene, getting some out. Time of possession for us is huge. And like I said, in a day and age where, you know, up-tempo teams don't even really care about time of possession, you know, because they play so fast, Mm -hmm. we're very cognizant of that. We're very cognizant of time, uh, how much time is left on the clock, you know, trying to keep the ball away from them. You know, it's always, you know, one way we know to help. Uh, there's a lot of hard ways to stop people, but, you know, one way to stop them is, you know, keep them on the sideline. Thank you, Ken. Hi, right, Gene. We'll now take Joey Knight with the Tampa Bay Times. Coach, has anything that Will Worth has done these last few weeks surprised you? Um, you know, Coach Jasper, yes. I mean, uh, you know, I thought he could run our offense, and Coach Jasper has always been a big proponent of his, and, 
has always believed in this kid. Um, you know, he's, uh, yeah, <laughs> he's playing well, but he's a lot better than I thought he would play. You know what I mean? It's just, uh, he's playing really, really well. But I think the thing, the one thing that hasn't surprised me, though, is just um, his leadership has inspired the rest of our team. You know, just his toughness, who he is, the way he carries himself. I think it's inspired everybody else to play harder and to give everything you have. You know, he's just one of those leaders that if if you're the offensive line or a wide receiver or a slot back or anybody else, even on defense, and you see your quarterback, you know, running over linebackers and, you know, and, and playing with great physicality, I mean, it just ups the physicality of your whole team. And so um been really, really happy with him. You know, I hope that he would play well. But he's playing a lot better than I thought, and you know, really, really excited for him. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. We'll now go to Bill Wagner with Baltimore Sun Media Group. Hey, Ken. Hey, um, Quinton Flowers. How does he compare to Ward from Houston? Are they basically the same guy, or are they a little bit different? I guess Flowers is a little more, a little bigger, so he might be more physical as compared to Ward being quick and elusive, but, uh, I mean, are they got very similar in the way that they can break down the defense, those two quarterbacks? Yeah, I think uh, that's a, good, a really fair analogy, Wags. They're very similar. Um, you know, the, like you said, the thing I think that Flowers has, he's, you know, about 210. He's a he's a bigger kid, uh, fast and powerful, uh, but presents the same problems. You know, when a quarterback's able to carry the football, you know, it just presents problems because you, you have another blocker now in blocking schemes, and, you know, if you commit too many guys to the run, they spread you out with their different formations, and he can get the ball out really quickly to the edge. So it spreads you out and, you know, makes you run east and west. And so just some of the problems he presents with his running ability and his strong arm to get the ball out of his hand quickly to the sidelines and also to throw it deep. You know what I mean? He throws a really good deep ball. You know what I mean? So they stretch you horizontally, vertically, and with their speed that they have, you know, I mean, the, the, the gaps get so big. Well, I was talking to Dale about this last week, but, I mean, this is like a weekly issue. <laughs> we Houston, Memphis, South Florida, I mean, every week you're going against these explosive offenses that really are very, very difficult to stop. I mean, it's, I, I, I guess you wish as a coaching staff if you could run into a team that couldn't score points or <laughs> move the ball like these teams seem to do in this league. Well, you know, you you got to stay one week at a time, but then, you know, then you got Notre Dame, Tulsa, SMU, Army, you know, they're all good teams. And so, I mean, it is what it is. Like you said, it's part of the conference. You know what I mean? A ton of guys are scoring a ton of points, but that's everywhere in college football. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, the Oklahoma TCU game, uh, uh, Texas Tech game. Uh, people are putting up a lot of points. Um but yeah, you know South Florida. You know you you don't get any time to rest. You got to press forward, and you got another highly explosive offense with a defense that's a physical defense with a lot of you know good skill players. You know what I mean? So it's another another tough challenge, man. And then last but not least for me, what? How do you change your schedule with the Friday game? I don't know if you're gonna. I'm guessing you'll have to travel Thursday and be down there, but. You know, how how does this affect you? Normally you'd have a good hard practice on Thursday and I'm not figuring you'll be able to. Yeah, we're going to adjust our practice, but I I don't want to tell too many people what we do. You know what I mean? There's some things that we do, but we'll adjust our practices. Okay, thanks. Hi, Wags. We'll now go to Leo Haggerty with It's Sports Magazine. Good morning, Coach. Hi, Leo. Coach, offensively for you guys, it looked like it all came together in the Houston game, and you've been hitting on all cylinders ever since. Is that a correct assumption? Well, I think we're playing better, you know what I mean? But I think a lot of it is, you know, we started off the season with Tongo Smith as our quarterback, and, you know, we uh, went to Will the next game, and, you know, we've adjusted, Will's adjusted. We had a – pretty much we have a pretty much a brand-new offensive line you know, that's the other things that get lost in the shuffle. Um, you know, Blake Copeland played, but he was a part-time starter last year. 
you know, so pretty much we're replacing the whole line. Adam West played some games, but he played a game last year. And so uh, I think and we have two new fullbacks. You know what I mean? So it was going to take some time uh, adjusting. A new quarterback added another element into it, but I think Coach Jasper and, you know, the offensive staff's done a really good job of just adjusting to our personnel. They're learning how to play. So it was, I think it was more than just um, – you know Houston or the time we had a we had a young team we had a team that the inexperienced team that on offense that had to you know get some game speed reps to get ready to go coach both you and USF are putting up big numbers in the points column do you expect the winner to have to score at least in the 30s well I don't know I mean I I never go into the game thinking oh, you got to score this much or whatever you know what I mean I, our only goal is to have one point more than them and and like you said, they're a really good defense, and you know our guys are right now in there trying to find a way to slow them down, and you know, and uh, an offense where we're trying to find a way to move the ball and keep them off the field, you know, is one way to slow them down. And you know, that's always been our hallmark of who we are. People are used to getting a ton of possessions. You know, if a team's used to getting 14, 13, whatever, sometimes 15 possessions, hopefully against us you get 10, or you know, and we just try to, or 11, and try to shorten your possessions. Or, um, but it's 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 going to be a tough. Uh, both teams are really, you know, put up some points. But uh, I don't ever go into a game thinking, you know, this is how much you have to score. Just do whatever it takes to win. Coach, last question, and thank you for your time today. I was at the Army Navy post game press conference in Philadelphia when you were truly agonizing over the Brigham Young job. What makes Navy such a special place that you turn that position down to stay at Annapolis? Oh, that's an easy one. Just the kids you coach. I mean, you just you you love coming to work every day. Um, you know, you coach some of the best kids in, from the country, and you just enjoy working with them. You know, what I mean, it's just uh, and you feel good that you have a small part in their lives. You know, for guys that are going to go out and serve our country. Um, I love coming to work here at the academy. I love the guys that I work with as far as coaches and staff. So it's a great place to work, uh, especially with the players and the staff here. Thanks, Coach. Good luck Friday night. Okay, thank you.